Good evening and welcome to the 2017 National Youth Council Presidential Debate. I am your moderator, Eleanor Joseph. I am from the community of Viewfort North, where I serve as the president of the Viewfort North Youth and Sports Council. Tonight we have with us two very dynamic gentlemen, both from the communities of Grosely, who will, in a short while, tell us why they are the best candidate for president of the National Youth Council, which we will also refer to as the NYC. Good evening also to our audience. The NYC is the umbrella body for youth organizations in St. Lucia. Its mandate and objective have been captured by the Act Number no. 14 of 1997, under which youth are empowered by the state to actively engage in the social, economic, political, religious, and environmental life, life of St. Lucia. A major role of the council is to advocate on behalf of young people on the issues of, that affect youth. And because this is a major role of the organization tonight, we will hear a lot about advocacy as our candidates tell us why they should be president. The organizational structure makes provision for a seven member executive, 19 district youth and sports councils, referred to as DYSs, and approximately 150 youth organizations. The National Students Council, the NSC, also forms a branch of the National Youth Council. At this upcoming General Assembly, in keeping with the spirit of democracy, we expect the outgoing executive will account for the past term in office. Such processes provided will account, will also make need for training and experience for young persons in matters of leadership and empowerment, management, advocacy, and, train, and team building. And we also expect the incoming executive to also be able to share with us such plans for the way forward. Tonight, we will hear from our candidates for the role of president of the NYC, and they will share with us why they should be voted in on the 27th of May, 2017, as president. With us this evening, we have Mr. Kirby Sidney, a 33-year-old young man from the community of Grosely. He is the president of the Grand Riviera Development Committee and a youth advocacy officer for the Commonwealth Youth for Peace Association Network. Ambassador. Ambassador. Too. Okay. And he will, of course, shed some light on that for us in a little while. And we also have with us Mr. Jeshron Andrew, also from the community of Grosely. He's 29 years old. He's the president of the National Equine Welfare and Sporting Association, an advisor to the Jockey Club, and the Assistant Secretary for the Grosely Youth and Sports Council. Because of our time constraints, we'll go straight to our questions. Our first question this evening, please tell us why at this point, you think you should be the president of the NYC. Not why you should be voted for, but why do you think at this present moment you have the ability to be the president of the NYC? Mr. Andrew. Well, good evening to everyone. Good evening, moderator. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, leadership for me began at a very tender age. Uh, our teams going to pick mangoes, I was always naturally the leader. And um, from there, growing up with my parents, both of whom were always leaders in their various you know, respective careers, I appreciated and was able to understand certain techniques and listen to their conversations and have a, a, a greater understanding, get a gist of what leadership meant. Even working with my mom, who was a nurse, going to work with her, on the district community level. Uh, she would go out and assist families and I would see the impact that it would have on persons changing their lives. And from early on, even being involved with my church youth group and 
we had a campaign there to be different where we tried to assist young persons, uh, persons, teenage pregnancy and other issues. Uh, coming up through school also, junior achievers at secondary school, you know, it, 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 it opened my mind to entrepreneurship, etc. Um, for the past 18 months, I've had leadership experience on a national organization and I've taken the organization from a very low level to a point at which now um, a lot of things are happening for persons within that organization. Also, currently I work as an agricultural extension officer, Ministry of Agriculture, where I'm responsible for managing 261 farmers and I've been doing so for the past five years. Uh, last year, attending, representing St. Lucia at an Emerging Leaders Conference in Malaysia, I was actually able to speak with some of the presenters and express my intentions in, in leading the organization. And many of them encouraged me and felt that, you know, I had the ability. And me being very disappointed with the performance of the organization uh, the past few years actually pushed me into coming forward and wanting to, 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 to lead the organization my understanding of the psychology of teamwork and team, team functionality. It, it, it is imperative that as a leader, you're able to keep your team together, keep your team bonded, and, and have everyone performing at you know, maximum optimal performance. So for me, a combination of these things, together with the fact that I'm very passionate about youth development and the development of my country as a whole, because the future of our country lies within the youth. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Sydney. Do tell us, why in this present moment you think it's the right time to vie for the post of president? Hello and good evening everyone. Uh, my interest in youth development has been one that spanned through many years. Uh, as a young man growing up uh, at the age of 13, I was introduced to being a part of committees and uh, one of the things that I learned was structure and administration. And coming through there, uh, at the age of 16, I was the president of my youth group. And uh, being the president of my youth group, it afforded me the op opportunity to be able to now learn diverse cultures, uh, learn how we deal with situations within a, a group. And uh, getting into youth development, I, I'm the community leader, uh, the president of the Grand River Development Committee, it afforded me also the opportunity to see a diverse section of community development, uh, which included youth. Uh, I have also been a part of the interim committee of the Grizzly Development Committee, uh, Youth Development Committee. And at that point in time, uh, when given that opportunity, we decided to uh, find out a way that we would truly demonstrate how to deal with the issues in Grizzly. Uh, we decided to zone Grizzly. I was responsible for a zone. And uh, at that point in time, it really showed that it set a path way as to being a part of youth developmental initiatives. And uh, the NYC was one that was very close to my heart. Uh, being uh, involved in the NYC, understanding the, the logistics of the NYC, it provided me the opportunity to understand uh, how the NYC works within St. Lucia and uh, I see no need uh, to find out whether I should have been a candidate. I, I think that I'm really and truly the quality of a leader that the NYC deserves right now, more than ever, and um, I put my heart in there. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. I'm just going forward. Please be guided that you have two minutes in which to answer your question. And of course, we have our current president, Ms. Lewis, who is our timer, so please be guided by that. One of the main functions of the NYC is advocacy. Correct. What is your experience as an advocate, and what does advocacy mean for you as a young person? Advocacy is very important, especially here in St. Lucia. However, with my experience, I've realized that there is a technique to it. Uh, we live in a society that is very color painted and you have to approach advocacy, yes, with a boldness, but with a level of wisdom that is needed to get your point across and to actually have the desired effect which you, you, you intend on based on what you're advocating about. Uh, in the past, well, many persons would know, in the past year or so, I've been advocating on behalf of 
young persons within the, the Horse Racing Association uh, who I believe needs to have the opportunity to benefit from all proposals, all developments taking place in St. Lucia. And I felt disappointed with uh, how the proposal was designed in terms of benefit for all of those young persons within the organization. And um, uh, I've also been advocates on, on the grassroots level with my organizations. Whereas you have, for example, persons who want to actually be part of groups and clubs but may have issues at home. And so your advocacy is not always on, on the national scale. Sometimes you have to help persons within their smaller groups. Conflict resolution, assisting with conflict resolution is a form of advocacy. Helping persons, providing advice to persons within small groups, two and three persons having an issue with one another is also advocacy. And so I believe that moving forward as the organization, we must have advocacy, advocacy sorry, as one of our top priorities to get things accomplished for the youth of St. Lucia. Thank you. Sydney? I believe uh, in anything else, uh, young persons need to really and truly understand that they have a voice. Uh, uh, they contribute to society. And uh, in anything else, uh, our young persons need to know that uh, their contribution to society is a direct reflection of how our country grows, uh, how, how we as a nation develop. Uh, the young people uh, so far has lost that voice and it's up to the NYC to, to challenge that, that, that voice towards the young persons. I, I, I believe that the young persons really and truly need uh, a body of persons that represent their, their, their issues, that represent them as a country and uh, we are the, that advocacy body. Uh, it's very instrumental in how you go about bringing our young persons uh, to understand that at that level um, because when you really look at our young persons uh, they don't really know how to challenge themselves they don't really know how to push forward the agenda of young persons within this country if we do not allow them that opportunity we need to provide that avenue we need to provide that hub where they could demonstrate that um, really and truly the issues matter to them and they could get these issues across, whatever it may be, whether it's the social issues, the religious impact, uh, the impact on the environment, um, all of these issues that affect young persons, they need to know that they have the avenue through the NYC to bring that out. Okay, very interesting responses. And I would want to just um, allow you to elaborate on both your responses. Um, Mr. Um, Andrew, you spoke about feeling disappointment with um, an organization as to how they represented young persons and how they responded to the need of young persons, right? Mm -hmm. However, you have been president of the Equine and um, Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. When you felt disappointed that young persons were not getting the needed voice, the needed response, mm -hmm. what was your response? Well, my response to that was to <coughs> reach out actually to the powers that be through all forms available to me. Press releases, media interviews, sending out letters, telephone calls, and actually ensuring that persons heard and persons were aware of the concerns of those young, pers of those young people. How effective I, I, was, were your measures? My measures? I believe they were effective. After a few months, uh, I was in receipt of a document which spoke to some of <laughs> our concerns. Um, it was released publicly, and um, uh, I was able to call another consultation meeting with those young persons to, to look through the document, because we had consultations prior to that to discuss what the actual uh, concerns and, and, and issues would have been. And um, we, we, we felt that we were making progress. And as of today, I am continuing to advocate on behalf of those young persons. And hopefully, we can, or our voice can actually make a difference. OK, thank you. Mr. Sidney, continue the same question. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Andrew spoke about receiving documentation. But 
what do you think is most important when it comes to results um, as it relates to advocacy? The receipt of documentation to know that you have been heard or the outcome in terms of what is the end product, what are the results of your advocacy efforts? I, at, at the end of the day, um, advocacy is not advocacy until you're heard, right? Uh, and it's results oriented. Uh, you would need to understand that um, in the youth development, especially in youth, youth development, you'd want to know that the, the powers that be, the, the, those that represent you, uh, they, they understand the agenda of youth development and they work within you. So we, we are collaborators in that, in that stage. Uh, when the actions that we represent the general council, their issues are, are, are issues that we are supposed to channel. And, and so when we are collaborators with the powers that be, whether it be uh, institutions, whether it be government, whether it be NGOs, whether it be those persons that, that, that bring out that, de that, that developmental strategy, and, and it doesn't happen, we then need to realize, hey, there needs to be some form of agi agi agitation. We need to reach to a point where, hey, if it's not happening, something needs to happen. We need to go a step further. And we need, to, you do this in consultation. You need to be aware, hey, uh, young persons, we are representing you. We're the ones out there uh, channeling your issues, channeling your, your beliefs, your motives, and we want to hear from you. So continuous consultation to be aware that we, our strategy is actually the strategy of youth, the strategy of the body that we represent, and we continue on there until something happens. Thank you very much. Investments in holistic youth development is critical to both the sustenance of the NYC and the St. Lucian economy. In your role as president, how can you advocate for relevant and effective investments in youth development, both from local and foreign investors? And I, I ask the question simply because as I read your profile, you both have indicated that you don't only have local knowledge, but also regional and international knowledge of advocacy and youth work. Well, yeah, okay, I'll start. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we need to understand uh, as, as leaders in our, ourselves, we, we need to understand that the organization that we represent uh, is an organization that is empowered for youth development. And uh, the strategies behind our, our agenda for youth development is one that it needs to be binding, it needs to collaborate uh, with those partners that, that, that we represent. We need to work with these youth-led um, organizations, both nationally, regionally, and international. Uh, international. Uh, one of the things that we as, as a unit should uh, inculcate is the fact that when we as young as as executive leaders uh, look on the outside, we need to understand that those bodies that represent us are bodies that represent our agenda, uh, and we work with them. Uh, when we develop uh, a strategy for any campaign whatsoever, we need to identify that these campaigns, whether it's locally, regionally, they affect our young people, and we work with that, with that campaign to reach out to these young persons. Uh, so there must be some sort of collaboration. There must be some sort of uh, interest as it relates to the issues that are both locally, regionally, and internationally that may affect us, that we have strategies down here to really and truly play it out. Thank you. Mr. Andrew? No matter how much we try to collaborate with international organizations, they always require us to have a starting point. We always must have a bit of the investment which is needed. And depending on government at this point in time is not the way forward. If anybody Googles the, the primary limitation of an NGO, any NGO is uh, financial stability. And you have to understand that you have to create ways to, to bring in resources, not just finance, but other resources that are necessary to, to, to maintain the sustainability and the structure of the organization. The organization is structured in that we have clubs, and the difficulties of those clubs include carrying out programs, executing uh, events and activities. And as the parent organization, we should facilitate 
in reducing the amount of stress and, 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 and depression associated with executing a lot of these activities. And so you, you, you have to find creative means to bring in resource, not just financial, but in terms of implements, equipment, to execute, properly execute the mandate of the organization. All right. Um, very interesting responses. Uh, um, and you both have indicated that you understand the need to have collaboration. Mm -hmm. What I need to um, ask or rephrase is that you haven't understood that need for collaboration. How do you now go to other agencies and advocate and say that we have a need as a youth organization this, and, and we need your support and, and we and hope to at the end of your meeting or your, or your um, intervention come back to your executive and say, yes, as president, I was able to secure X, Y, and Z. Well, well, basically, you have to understand that many organizations have their agenda, their specific agendas. And in writing proposals or projects, you have to tailor it in a way such that it appeals to their personal agenda. So you might get an organization who, you know, they, they're concerned about domestic violence. And so you don't write a, a proposal to them about uh, something that has nothing to do with domestic violence. So it's, it's all about your skills and your techniques with project proposals and writing it to the level and to the skill where you, you actually gain their interest in wanting to uh, fund whatever activity, whatever program is it that you're trying to develop. I think that approach combined with um, many organizations when we, when we do programs, we fail to give back reports to those international organizations saying, well, your funds were used in such a way and it was beneficial that the impact was this, that this was that. We have to maintain that relationship with those organizations and let them see that their investment was worthwhile. And so the next time we come to them, they will be more forthcoming with whatever assistance that they were able to give and probably even more in the future. Thank you. Uh, uh, to be honest, every... Uh, NYC needs to realize that uh, to gain the, the access to funding, you have to be a respected organization. So definitely the first part of it is to basically meet those partners that we engage with, those international agencies, those persons, to really and truly get back to the understanding to, hey, hey, we are really and truly there for youth development and we want to partner with you. So we need to re-strategize as to the partners that we, we, we adapt to as the NYC. Another strategy of, uh, that my team would develop is to construct a, a program implementation team. That team would be wholly and solely interested in policy development and funding, um, finding out that our programs really and truly cater to our young persons uh, prepare project proposals that would be effective and, and calculative and really and truly get that, that project funded. Uh, those persons would, through the direction of the first vice president, would then now initiate uh, conversations with those partners and, and feel more confident to knowing that, hey, there is a proposal out there and there are plenty of proposal opportunities out there. Uh, we need to be able to strategize effectively to get those proposals funded and to have an idea as to how we're going to implement those proposals on the ground. Thank you. Wonderful responses, which, which will prompt me to, to ask another question. Um, both of you have indicated you have come here with team members. And so, again, I haven't read your manifesto. I know there are two teams, Team Revolution and Team Regenerate. Very interesting. And um, I like to sometimes think that I am a little revolutionary. I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> but um, we speak about revolutions and regenerating, being different, being better. And then I also heard that there are, there's little money, but there's money out there, whereas your resources may be very scarce here, but there are resources out there. Management of resources is critical to the success and growth of NYC. In light of limited resources, how can you as president effectively and efficiently manage the resources while maintaining your integrity and that of the organization? Well, for me as a president, 
one of my approaches is to actually increase on those limited resources. As a people, we often tend to develop heavily, not develop, sorry. We tend to um, depend heavily on external assistance. When as we, we, we can actually do a lot of the stuff ourselves, I believe in leading by example and finding creative ways to, to, to bring in collateral is what we're trying to help the young people of St. Lucia understand. And so we as an organization should lead by example. And I think that even as an NGO, it, 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 it does not mean that we don't uh, start programs that bring in funds because every NGO has uh, costs and, 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 and things that, that, that need to get done. And so it does not mean that you, you, you don't find creative ways to, to make yourself sustainable. Um, also, as a president, I think that we need to not only lead by example, but develop programs that, that, that teach young persons how to do exactly what we are proposing. OK, thank you. Mr. Sidney? I, I always say to my team that uh, in order to manage the resources, first of all, the, res the number one resource is human resource. And uh, when, you de when you develop the human resource, you, you have a better understanding of how you go about developing the country on a whole. Uh, our young persons within the DYSCs, within the clubs, they need to be in, uh, empowered through finding innovative ways to, to branch out and to develop themselves. And that's where the strength lies. Uh, when you work within these establishments, you then build that strength where the NYC really and truly gets the opportunity to, to spread its wings, uh, to know that really the, the various clubs and organizations are functioning effectively. But how do you do that? Uh, I believe the NYC needs to maintain these partnerships. Uh, there, it's not just uh, monetary funding, but there are a lot of resources out there that the NYC can tap into. And so memorandum of understandings need to be set up with various organizations that we can develop uh, to using resources that they may have at, that, at their disposal that we can use as well. That saves us money. Uh, an uh, another initiative is, as, as I indicated, that we need to tap into the resources on the outside. Uh, we cannot depend on government. Uh, there is no way that, uh, <laughs> as an organization, that we, we can fund ourselves through the, the, the limited resources that we get through government. So there needs to be strategy as to memorandum of understandings, uh, working with the resources, the human resources that we have at our disposal, and as well getting uh, some entrepreneurship opportunities within the NYC where we could as well get monies on our own. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen, you have been very good in, um, in your responses, but I want to now get to the meat of the matter, where you do not give broad answers, but now more specific um, responses to the questions that, um, will, that will follow. Mm -hmm. Unemployment, career mobility, and the need for decent, sustainable jobs are often overlooked by governments who create plans and policies which often only make provision for artificial employment. Please advise two possible strategies to curb this problem. I think two strategies to curb this problem would be actually improving on our education system, whereby we stop concentrating on the, the, the academics, but we, we broaden the scope for development of our people, and we provide opportunities for persons to develop trades and, and, and skills that is different from the tradi traditional academic stress that is put on our system. Uh, in addition to that, I think as a people, we can also uh, push heavily on entrepreneurship, even with discussions earlier in light of CSME and OECS and CARICOM and the ability for our our youth, our entrepreneurs, to have a wider market, a Caribbean market. I think encouraging uh, entrepreneurship amongst young persons is one of the ways that we can execute this effectively. Okay. Thank you. Okay, two things. Uh, again, I 
in discussion with my, my team, uh, and we spoke at length concerning these things, then there are issues that, uh, these are issues that are perennial. Uh, it's not only St. Lucia, but a number of Caribbean countries, the, the, the world over, uh, unemployment is a big issue. And uh, it's uh, twofold. One, I believe that the strategy is to make our young persons um, employable. Uh, to get to do that is you need to have some system value in place where through the syllabus of the schools, and I always say at least through Form 4, get some subject area that speaks to professional development. Uh, getting employable uh, through the world of work. I, I believe that that needs to be instituted through our schools uh, to get our young persons. Our young persons really and truly do not know the, the aspects of really and truly going out there and getting a job what they need to do uh, with the various uh, CVs and cover letters, how to approach an interview. All of these things are things that need to be inculcated through the school system. And we need to get that done. Uh, so making them employable and as well avenues for employment. Uh, I believe that a lot has been done for at-risk youth uh, as it relates to employment in this country. Uh, as really the NSDCs, uh, all of these uh, programs that speak to uh, youth at risk. Uh, but a lot of our young persons who went through school, uh, who have done well, they go out into the world of work and can't even get a job. So there needs to be opportunity, and we need to provide those opportunities for those persons. Uh, they're persons, as Jeshwin said, uh, relating to skills. Uh, they are skillful. Um, they're not too well on the academics. They need to be strategy in place. Uh, what it means through the school system, get those young persons um, through strategy implementation programs for their skills and use them within their communities. Thank you very much. Um, we also want to make provision for the audience to be able to ask some questions. <coughs> so members of the audience, should you have any questions, you can prepare yourselves to be able to ask the questions after this one, um, this final question from me for now. Um, I heard there was a common thread um, um, with the vice president and now the president that you have felt that you have not received adequate representation from the NYC in times past. My question to you, should you become the next NYC president? as a young man, a young revolution, um, revolutionary person who thinks outside the box, what would you do differently with the NYC? What I would do differently with the NYC, not necessarily differently, but we must be aware that the way in which we used to reach out to young persons in the past it, it no longer works. What percentage of our youth population, you know, listens to the news or listens to, to, to talk shows and the, the regular traditional avenues which were used to reach out to them, get messages to them? We have to adapt our methods and our technologies. There's a lot of talk about uh, social media and some persons concentrate only on social media. But, but social media is something that we have to use to our benefit. And I can use a little, you know, analogy here. When, you, when you're baking a cake, you don't get the desired effect at the end. You go back and you investigate the ingredients. The ingredients into making an adult today is the home, the society, the school, media, and social media. These are all the ingredients that work towards the building of our young people, what molds them, what has impact on their minds. And so if we want to tweak or change what the end product is, we have to start with the individual ingredients. So we're looking at the school system, we're looking at social media. You have to adapt, you have to change, you have to understand the dynamics of this new generation of young persons and effectively tweak and tailor your programs, your techniques, and your approach to actually reach out and speak to them. Like, like Nayas uh, stated earlier, you know, young persons now, they don't read. 
young persons look at videos and this is an obvious fact you want to reach out to a young person you you, you go to them where they are thank you um, very interesting statement about young people and how you can reach them. Um, I would have loved to hear that you actually um, did go, went beyond sitting with your team, but actually went to the various district youth and sports councils. Mm -hmm. um, because we have heard that you want to fight we're weeks away from the election, mm -hmm. but I've not heard that you've actually gone to the, to the various district youth and sports councils I, to get that information. But we'll get back to you on that, and you could tell us some more about that. But Mr. Sidney, um, tell us. Okay, so I I always say that the NYC is not is not the the, the focus. Uh, the it's not just the NYC. It's not just the district youth and sports councils. It's not just the clubs, but it's youth on a whole. We represent the the youth of this country, mm -hmm. and so uh, it has to be one of inclusion, uh, and that's something I think that we have lost. Uh, we have lost the touch of of representing the youth of this country. Uh, we, and understanding the NYC, the role of the NYC, of course, we're busy trying to fix the administrative body uh, that we lose the attention or, and focus of the various DYSCs, the affiliates, uh, even the Students' Council. Um, we lose that focus. We, we, we tend to draw back a little because of the, the, the so many things that are happening within the, the NYC. But I think one of inclusion needs to come. Uh, first of all, the young persons need to recognize that NYC is them. I am NYC, you are NYC. Uh, we did that body that represents uh, that, that, that union. And if we don't get that point across, the young persons would not know where their focus lies. When they, need, when, when they have issues, who answers these issues for them? Who works on behalf of them? They would not understand that. So I think one of inclusion needs to be one where we recognize that yeah, young persons wow. see and understand that we represent them and their views are answered through our governing body. Thank you very much. Um, our time is almost fast spent and we want to ensure that the audience gets a fair chance to ask some questions. And so our very first question from the audience will be from Mr. Zachary Hippoli. Nine. President Nancy and Lucia, one is allowed the right to vote at the age of 18. And also in St. Lucia, one is allowed to consent to sex at the age of 16. This gives a perception that our young persons can understand the complexities of having sex, mm -hmm. but are not able to understand the reason why they're voting. So therefore, you have 16-year-olds who can have children at 16, 17, but they're not able to vote on policies that may affect their own child positively or negatively. So there's this trend of thought that the voting age should either be lowered, should be lowered, or the age of sexual consent should be raised to 18. What are your views on this issue? Gentlemen. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and, and that's a contentious is issue. That's an issue that, that has been debated quite a while through St. Lucia. Uh, persons have spoken about uh, the age of consent uh, against the age of, of really and truly casting your, your, your vote. I honestly believe that uh, it has to be, uh, the age of consent needs to be 18. Why I say this? Uh, the complex issues relating to uh, persons consenting to sex, I, I, I honestly believe at 16, you, you do not know the responsibility of, of handling such, such a thing. Uh, you cannot deal with the, the, the issues that exist thereafter. You have the rise of uh, teenage pregnancy. You have the, uh, the diseases that are out there. You, you, you're not mature enough to make such decisions. And I believe uh, if you're mature enough at the age of 18 to, to set policy and to be able to, to, to put your vote where you believe that representative can make a contribution to, to your, your, your community or to your district, I believe that you should have the understanding at 18 to know 
right from wrong. You, you have a better understanding to deal with this boy that would just shy you and say sweet nothings and, and, and get into your pants. You or know? Girl. And uh, <laughs> 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 or girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's, it's very important that uh, maturity kicks in at the age of 18, and you should have that opportunity through there. Thank you. Well, I think that we have to look at a little deeper as to why those ages were, you know, prescribed and who prescribed, the, you know, those ages. I think uh, medical personnel who would have done extensive research on hormones and, and, and development physically of the human body would have proposed the age of 16 based on your development physically, your health aspect, your hormones, how your mind would have developed sexually at the age of 16. I think that had more of a scientific approach to it rather than a, a social approach. You see, voting it comes more on a, a social angle and, and, and the interest of a 16-year-old is, is really low. The development of the mind to understand the dynamics of politics at that age is, 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 is not the same as, as, as how the mind have been, how the bodies have developed, you know, sexually. So you have to understand there's a clear difference between how they came to those two ages. Those, 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 those figures. And I always believe in compromise. Maybe we could bring both of them to 17. <laughs> <laughs> compromise. Very interesting. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. <laughs> Let's hope that we don't yeah. compromise too many things. <laughs> um, we now have another question like from our outgoing president, uh, Ms. Louise Victor. Gentlemen, um, Something that has been outstanding from the last two general assemblies is constitution reform. Um, both previous administrations have started the process, but we somehow never seem to get to where we should get to. Ultimately, our structures, where we go, is affected by our constitution. What is your approach to revamping or revisiting NYC's constitution which will ultimately impact um, that of the DYSCs and what is your approach or strategy in terms of inclusion in terms of having young professionals because we speak of resources tapping into human resources and we have a lot of young professionals who want to contribute to NYC what is your strategy regarding constitution reform for the National Youth Council if we are to have a true youth revolution I, I, I hope I can fit my response into two minutes. Uh, please do. <laughs> <coughs> Start over, please, timer. Um, <laughs> the, my team and I, one of, our, one of our first orders of the day would be constitution reform. Uh, the constitution was structured in 1985. You know, time has passed. The organization we're supposed to represent all youth in St. Lucia is unable to, you know, properly, properly do so because of the structure of our constitution. And one of the things that my group and I have discussed is actually a system to get those youth, uh, you know, included. And it would, it would entail actually a, a community, community, individual community database. Those are persons who are not members of clubs. However, they wish to be a part of the organization. And so they register with their district youth and sports council. And those persons are placed on an individual community affiliates list. Now, those persons pay a registration fee, like if you were joining a club. And they would actually have to qualify to be able to vote. That way, you, you, you safeguard uh, uh, any kind of bubble that persons may try to to, to put in the system, you know. And so those persons would have to show active involvement in meetings and activities to qualify to actually vote at a general assembly. But with this structure, you, you actually allow for the inclusion of all youth. The constitution currently is very vague. It does not provide solutions to certain situations. Even coming out of the, the, the last, the current situation, persons have a lot of questions, too many questions that can be asked. And so the constitution needs to be 
you know, um, revised and done forthwith. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Andrew. Um, very interesting response that you, that you gave in the sense that you spoke both of inclusion and then um, conditions for the inclusion. Mm -hmm. And most times it's a deterrent to young persons. But let's hear what Mr. Um, Sidney has to add to that. Uh, again, I share uh, the sentiments of Joshua. Uh, there needs to be uh, constitution reform. Uh, it has been tabled twice. Uh, so something needs to happen. So my team, uh, we are going to implement a, a constitution reform team uh, headed by, I, I, I honestly believe that our legal counsel should get some more work after this electoral mm -hmm. <laughs> strategy. And I, I, I think these young persons who have the knack for uh, that sort of uh, reform should provide the avenue and uh, so sit, uh, go through the constitution, understand uh, what things works present, work presently, what don't work, bring an account to the executive. We bring it back to our general body because these are the persons we represent. Uh, we seek consultation. We find out from them whether these things could work. We go back to the, 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 the team uh, to see how we could strategize and make a, a more robust constitution that really and truly uh, meets the needs of today's youth, uh, the, millenni the millennials, those persons that we want to uh, really communicate with, get in contact with. And, and so that is, that is the strategy that I, I, I would see going forward as it relates to constitutional reform. Thank you. We have a question now from our outgoing General Secretary, Ms. Uh, <coughs> Diane Fia Justine. Justin. Um, good night, everybody, gentlemen. Um, I, I always keep saying that I've been in NYC from 2012. I've, I've seen the leadership qualities of all those that I've worked with. I've worked with Jonathan Charlotte, Timothy Thelinen, and Louis Victor. And for me personally, I've, I've made a, a clear assessment of who they are and what they are and what they can contribute. Um, as General Secretary, um, an assistant secretary where I serve, it has always been a challenge, one, to get your team to work as you, as you think they should, that's one challenge. Two, being in the District Youth and Sports Council, even on my community club and to the national level, it has always been a challenge to get the responses of District Youth and Sports Council the timing that you want. This has never happened. These are some other. And three, when we are working, we're working with characters, we are working with human beings, but we have to function as a team. Um, throughout these three, 10 years, these challenges have always been there. And I can reassure you that these, challenge, these challenges will be there. My question to you, both of you, how do you intend as, a pres as the president of the organization, as the leader of the organization, as a leader of a team, as a leader of a PAC, speak to the t challenges on the ground, the, ch the administrative challenges, and the challenges you will face personally as a president with your team? Thank you. Just keep in mind, um, persons asking questions, you have just one minute in which to ask your question. <laughs> Go ahead, gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Uh, from my experience, many leaders have failed because they have brought on the leadership techniques associated in an employed uh, scenario setting or the techniques that, that they would use in, in a business setting and actually try to use those to manage a voluntary group, voluntary um, um, organization. And, and, and that is a total clash. You cannot use the same techniques. Uh, in, in business or in an environment where persons are paid a salary and use it in, in, in voluntarism. You need to understand team dynamics, the psychology of human nature, how personalities interact, how to you know, effectively handle conflict resolution. You have to see conflicts ahead of time. You have to be that milk 
in the in, in the in the in the in the cereal, that kind of person that gets everybody going, gets everybody yeah. blended, you know, that person that is able to motivate the team. You have to be able to to motivate your team, you know, first and foremost. If if you cannot motivate your team, I don't know how you're gonna motivate a nation of youth. You know, so effectively, your, your leadership starts with an understanding of personal interactions. And then once you're able to get that team functional and working, then you can come together and blend your ideas. Because everybody has different ideas and we have to know how to make all our ideas come together, mesh and work together as one unit. This is what is, you know, would solve a lot of the issues associated with leadership in voluntarism uh, environments. Thank you. Mr. Sidney? I believe in the philosophy of collaborative team working. Uh, I, I, I love working as a team, with a team, where you have an agenda uh, to fulfill for youth development. And I believe that every one of the participants, every one of the persons vying for positions within the NYC, uh, they, they demonstrate youth developmental uh, character. However, I, I, uh, there will be opportunities, as uh, Diane Fia indicated, that things will not always go well. But it's uh, about how uh, a team manages itself. Uh, it is about administrative structure of the team. Uh, I, I believe in teamwork, and that is one of the, the, the pillars of, of Regenerate, uh, to regenerate a, a team. A, 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 a team NYC, not just the executive, but all around uh, the various clubs, the DYSCs, the students' councils, uh, those we affiliate with, the youth led organizations uh, that are out there. We all work as a team with the goal of youth development. And I believe if that strategy is, uh, is heard throughout, uh, there would be a much better harmony with how we go about um, implementing these strategies. Uh, so, Collaborative team working is, is the way to go, and uh, there is no way that if you go through that, that, that point, that the organization will not be successful. Thank you. We now have uh, <coughs> the former president of the National Students Council, uh, Mr. Jani Lebon. Yes, liberaliz liberalism is definitely on the rise. Over the past few years, we've seen global movements in order to attract or pay attention to the agendas of minority groups such as the LGBTQI community. We have groups advocating for the decriminalization of marijuana. We also have the nationalistic approach of Donald Trump and the, Bre the Brexit movement as well. How do you, as a president of a national youth organization, cater to the agendas of minority youth within the country? How do you represent them and how do you pay attention to their issues in order that in order to give them a, a national audience um thank you gentlemen please keep your responses to one minute thank you you see it, it goes right back to to uh, advocacy and advocacy is a, a holistic approach we need to give equal representation and equal time you know for the various uh groups and societies and and, and persons within our communities and I believe that supporting even those groups in minority is, is very important because we, we all make up the society. And even the minority groups can actually you know, produce leaders, produce persons who can develop the country uh, down, the, down the road, down the line. And we must always remember that full inclusion is important as an organization that is representative of the general youth body. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. Give them a voice. Uh, provide that avenue where they could express their 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 their, uh, their beliefs. Uh, because it's 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 young persons really and truly having their their beliefs, and we give them that opportunity to express that. Uh, uh, there was this uh, this group, uh, the Rastafarianism, uh, when they did. Uh, the the last uh, initiative they had down in the south uh, i i think that these are the opportunities where young persons can express themselves uh through the nyc i honestly believe that they should also be inclusive uh they should be provided an opportunity to work within the the the, the establishment whatever it is whatever team it may be to get their voice across to have that impact uh one of my 
initiatives is to allow even dis the differently abled individuals to come on board and to make a contribution to the NYC. That is something that I'm really interested in. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. We now have Ms. Rejan Montour for a question. Yes. Um, given that Inusha placed third on a um, data survey let out by the World Economic Forum on countries where a woman is most likely to be your boss, I would like to ask the two candidates, what are your views on women in leadership, and how do you plan to ensure that young women are given the opportunity to lead? Thank you. Well, gender equality is of utmost importance, you know, and even in forming our team, we put together a team which, which has a, a special gender balance. We, we don't also have... <laughs> 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 and apart from that gender balance, you know, we, we ensured that persons came from varying geographic locations where they can represent the, the, the cultures and the beliefs of, of, of persons throughout the country. And um, uh, like Rejan just mentioned, you know, it is important that we embrace the, the ladies, our, our, our women in society. They, they are talented, <coughs> just like we the men. Even within the home, we have to understand that women are important. My mother always tells my father, you can be the head, but I'm the neck, you know. <laughs> the right. head cannot turn without the neck, you know. And so we, we need to understand that women are part of society. They are important, and I'm all for gender balance. Thank you. Mr. Sidney? Women are excellent managers. Uh, I, would, I would go with a team of women, uh, managing a team of women any day. Uh, over men. <laughs> Sorry, they're excellent managers. They, they really and truly bring out what you expect in, 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 in quality managerial skills. And uh, come on board. I, we're making, we're setting up teams. Uh, I really wish that through the DYSCs and the affiliates that more women uh, show their worth and, and, and contribute to, to the development of youth. I think that's my first response for the evening. <laughs> we have our <laughs> final question this evening from our CYEN representative. Joan Husbands, Treasurer of the Caribbean Youth Environment Network. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, nominees. Thank you. It has been noted that the internal constitutional reform is much needed for the NYC at this point in time. However, what is your priority uh, on the national youth policy with regards to your presidency and with, regard, with regards to the molding programs that you would like to implement with regard to that policy? Um, what would you do to ensure, or what is how, first of all, the priority of it? What would you do to ensure that it is, we, that we agitate effectively in order to implement or to ensure that it's legislated? Because the last that I noted it was still in draft phase. Um, okay. What would you do to ensure that it's implemented? And lastly, environmental programs. What environmental programs are important? do you think important to the youth now, and especially in, in lieu of the current programs that are happening, which is affecting the environment in St. Lucia, what would the NIC do, or you as a president do, in order to protect the youth and to ensure the sustainable livelihoods of the youth uh, with regard to those programs? Thank you, Ms. Husbands. Um, candidates? Um, you have several questions with several <laughs> well, Let's try to answers. give us the, the short and form <laughs> as we quickly run out of time. <laughs> I'll start with the latter and go in reverse. In terms of uh, the environment, I believe that moving forward, we need to help the youth understand that what they do now will be affecting them in the long run, in the short run. And so we should have many educational programs, environmental educational programs, to, to educate those young persons in, in, in interesting ways. So you, you have you know, interesting little you know, initiatives to get them to understand uh, the benefits of the environment. I think uh, as youth, we should come together to do a few more cleanups and, um, you know, tree planting activities, various activities, hands-on, that get the youth involved in, in protection of the environment. And okay, um, I'm going to stop you there, and thank you for that response. And allow Mr. Sidney to elaborate on the second part of the okay. question that was, that was asked in terms of the youth policy. Okay, so uh, the... The second part, the youth policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, definitely the youth policy needs to be on the desk of of our our ministers. Uh, the, it needs to be in parliament. It needs to be sitting in parliament uh, for debate and approval. Uh, and so uh, we will work within our powers uh, to make that happen. Uh, 
I, I believe honestly that the policies, the, the governing body as to how we then structure our youth programs in this country. And uh, it is something that is needed uh, more than ever. Uh, and so what I would uh, imagine is that uh, going into uh, this new term, that more consultation has to be done with the, those parties involved, the DYSCs, the clubs, the, those unattached. Everyone needs to be included in right, basically you go, understanding. You go back the to the policy. point of inclusion. Thank you. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, audience. You all have been wonderful. We've had very interesting responses, very interesting debate <coughs> here this evening. Um, you have now a rare opportunity of 15 seconds to pitch. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know what you want, then 15 seconds is sufficient. It's often been said that the NYC is obsolete. It, it has run its course and, and there's no need because DYS is thrive without it. Other youth organizations are able to work without it. Why should anyone vote for you as president to bring back an organization which most people think they can do without? 15 seconds. I think now more than ever, the NYC needs uh, a leader who can administratively and connecting with our young persons to develop strategies. Uh, a leader who is focused, uh, who, is, who, who, who brings visions, who brings absolute uh, effective and strategic programs, uh, and who really and truly has a knack for uh, being able to develop and, and, and implement programs on the ground for Thank our Thank you very much, Mr. Sydney. Mr. Andrew, tell Jes us. Jeshurun Andrew is very action-oriented. We are about positive change, revolutionary approach, getting the job done. So voting for Jeshua and Andrew at this election will prove to bring the organization to a point where it is of optimal and perfect levels Thank of you performance. Thank you so much. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. You have been a one. You have been wonderful as um, um, debaters. You've you've set your um, points. You've made your points. We know where you stand as it relates to youth development. And on the twenty seventh of May, twenty seventeen, at the Financial Administrative Center, young persons will have the, a chance to voice who they think is the best candidate and who will represent us for the next two years as the president of the National Youth Council. Thank you and good evening. <laughs>